Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS. If you're new, welcome and welcome back, KS family. And let's run the numbers. Bitcoin currently up 3.58% to 36.304. Ethereum up 5.5% to 2536. From my 30 plus years in financial markets, I explained the smart money institutional mindset to assist you to be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love, gaining real wealth in the process. If you would like daily updates on price movements in the crypto market, seven days a week, 365 days a year, please subscribe to YouTube. There are many people inside our community going through life pullbacks. If you're going through one, I'd just like to let you know that our love and healing thoughts are with you. There's always hope. The sun will come out again and you're not alone. The recent sell-off has been a little bit greater than what we anticipated about 50 days ago on December the 5th, 2021. We said that it could come down to around this area. It's gone a little bit further down from that, but that's probably on geopolitical news more than anything. That's why I always say we have to make in advance probabilistic choices. We need to know the answer to three questions. What will we do if price keeps on going down? What will we do if price just rallies up? What will we do if price just goes sideways? You need to know the answers to these questions, but more importantly, you need to be able to act on them. Just knowing and saying, if it goes down, I'll hold. Well, that's good. You know what you're doing. If it goes down, I'll sell. That's good as well. You know what you're doing. If it goes down, I'll try to accumulate a bit more. That's good. If it goes up, what will you do? It's really important to have this done in advance of time. I share this every single day on the community because it combats the retail mindset, which is it can go up and down and sideways, but I only think it will go up. So therefore, I won't even think about if it goes down. So how has price actually been playing out? We can see Bitcoin is currently 36,256. It had a technical violation. It came down technically into the black swan zone. I think this is primarily due to geopolitical moves. Russia, Ukraine. I believe the federal Fed Reserve rate hike has already been priced in. It was priced in some time ago. And what we can see, Evergrande is not so bad as an issue. What we really are seeing here is a very large reaction to just something that has recently occurred. We always said that we could get a technical violation. We thought at the worst we would come down to about 37,406. We came down to 34,178. Now, a lot of people want certainty and you can always separate amateurs from professionals by their addiction to certainty. In financial markets, there is no certainty. As soon as you can move away from the fantasy of certainty into the reality of probability, you'll start to do really well. Turning to KS own analysis, the four stages that all investors and traders progress through to become consistently profitable and attain real wealth. Zone one and zone two are the addiction to certainty. It literally is an addiction. People want to be 100% certain. They don't want to make any losses. When it comes down to not making any losses, when the market is red, people in zone one and zone two will sell. When the market goes green, it's almost like a call to arms. Zone one and zone two buying comes out of the woodwork. This is the exact opposite behavior of professionals. Professionals actually lean in to all positions. They never, ever buy at market. They layer down to support levels and they're very patient and they know that it can take weeks or even months for particular trades to come out in the positive direction. But they understand that they know what they're doing. However, Certainty is a really, really big problem because it creates blame. Blame stops people from learning. That is why blame is such a huge, huge problem when it comes to trading and investing. For example, today, looking at the market, it looks quite green. And there would be people saying, why didn't you tell me it was going to go green? But we did. 
and we knew it was going to go green. This is part and parcel of the volatility inside the crypto market. Even other people would say, why didn't you tell me that it was going to go down so far? 50 days ago, we did. We said the probability is that we'll come down to here. That's around the 37,000. And geopolitical moves such as Russia and Ukraine are probably causing what we're seeing inside markets much more than anything else. We very, very closely monitor the markets every day. This is something new, but it's also a technical violation and technical violations always exist to shake retail out of their positions. By the time retail comes back into the market, prices absolutely taken off and people are so scared that they'll do anything to buy in. And that's what causes the exponential run-ups as well as the liquidation of shorts. The crypto market has been coming down for around 75 days. That's a really long period of time. When we have sustained downward price momentum, people call bear markets and they use stock market technology <laughs> terminology to say a 20% decrease is a bear market. 20% is every other Tuesday. What we see here, people put on the laser eyes when price is going up and up and up. People put on their bear eyes. We should create bear eyes, Beardy. When, and Nick, when price comes down and down and down, this is just part and parcel of the volatility inside the crypto market. We're still in a bull structure. Everything is being maintained from a technical perspective. I'd like to thank Martin and Richard for reaching out and sharing different news stories. Thank you so much, everyone, and all the other community members who do so as well. Families of U.S. Embassy personnel in Ukraine ordered to begin evacuating as soon as Monday. There is quite a bit of turbulence in the Ukrainian region at the moment. And we can see Spain dispatching warships to the Black Sea to boost Ukraine's defenses. It's not a very good situation that's happening in Ukraine. I think this is absolutely unsettling markets globally. A very good source for up-to-date information is also the Ukraine War Report. That's on Twitter, at UKR War Report. There's some pretty interesting stuff in here, and I urge you to have a look at it. When war breaks out, we can actually look at precious metals such as gold and silver. When there's a lot of conflict throughout the world, gold does really, really well. So we'll keep our eyes on that. We can see gold overcoming a level of resistance at the moment. Turning to the crypto fear and greed index, we saw extreme fear in the market at 11 yesterday. It's just popped up to 13. Anything around 10 is an absolute magnificent buying opportunity. And we always see these kinds of bounces the days after. You can think back to a couple of days ago. It was blood red, just everything falling. Price is always moving in a wave, and that's what we understand as crypto technical analysts. The critical thing to note is rule 45. No alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity. If Bitcoin goes down, it will take the entire crypto market with it. Masterclass students, when you get to TM2, you'll get a copy of my live chart here, the KS model. The KS model is a crypto technical trading model based on institutional price psychology. We can see that the floor for price, this green line, and the green is buy, that particular price level is $26,020. If we get any kind of sustained sell-off, a major black swan, we would anticipate it would come down to there. But what could it do after that? We've seen many, many black swans. What they do is they come down and they bounce. This is the nature of a black swan. And black swans can occur at any stage. We've seen four of them recently. And that's really suppressed price action. When we get really oversold, what happens is the profitability comes out of the market. The shorts come in, but there's too much loss. So what happens is the shorts need to refuel. They need to buy back their positions. In doing so, they actually increase price. This can create a knock-on or flow-on effect. 
where shorts take out shorts because they're simply covering their positions. And of course, the institutions love to play games and they can actually just buy up and liquidate the shorts. That's what happened down in this particular area when we recovered around the 18th of July. That was a short fuel liquidation frenzy. That's what caused price to go parabolic. This is always something that you need to bear in mind. When shorts get liquidated, they can increase price exponentially. Rule 781, crypto technical analysis is a skill and it's a philosophy. The philosophy is about unemotional attachment to what actually happens in the market. You can think about it this way. A surgeon doesn't get emotional when they need to go in to do an operation. If the surgeon became emotional, that would actually mess up the operation. Operations are hard enough already. It's the same with a crypto technical analyst. The skill is there just like a surgeon skill is there, but the philosophy must always be one of an absolute emotional control. That's why in the masterclass, I always do real wealth before the trigger section. I'll just take you down to the real wealth section. This is really, really vital stuff. Without real wealth, without the philosophy and understanding of real wealth, people get their trades wrong all the time. It is a psychological battle. It's literally psychological warfare out there and you need to be in command. Then in the trigger section, we go through how to buy, how to sell, all those sort of things. And of course, there's an actual living masterclass section where content is added in response to current market conditions, continuing on with different trades and anything that the masterclass community finds of use and value. The goal of the masterclass is that I want to enable you to do what I do by transferring my knowledge so that you can be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love. You'll literally get the tools and the mindset that goes with it to be successful in any market, bull market, consolidation, bear market. It absolutely doesn't matter. The tools are applicable to all. It's fair that a lot of people want certainty out of the crypto market. Unfortunately, it's a fable. It's a myth. It doesn't exist. And people selling you certainty, they're just scammers. There is no such thing. I just tell you the brutal truth because with that, you can do something about it. Having an addiction to certainty will cause you no end of losses inside crypto. The key is to get into zone three and zone four. Zone three is trading the chart in front of us. It's all about probabilistic fearlessness. It's about leaning in to strong projects and saying technically they look very good. Let's lean into them. Leaning in is all about buying at support levels down and is going as low as you can go actually, because when you think about the volatility inherent inside crypto, Things can vary by massive percentages just month on month. Please be aware of that. The other thing is basing everything on patience and rules and probability. Understanding that the market is very, very turbulent and you want to take advantage of that turbulence, not be a victim of it. When you think about these different zones, zone one and zone two are the stress and the loss zones. It's really easy to tell people in zone one and zone two, they're really stressed out and they're full of anger and blame. And of course they are because they had a myth told to them that there was certainty inside crypto. There is no certainty inside crypto. As soon as this is embraced, people can move into zone three where they just learn. Blame is a very, very destructive emotion. Blame stops learning. You cannot enter zone three with any blame. You have to have learning. How to have learning when you feel like you need to blame the world? It's through forgiveness, but not forgiveness of other people, just forgiveness of yourself. When you know the rules of the market, you'll do really, really well. Crypto technical analysis is one of the highest paid professions in the world. It requires a lot of knowledge and diligence and discipline to affect, but so does becoming a doctor, engineer, lawyer, 
educator, anything like that, it all requires effort and energy and all always to know the rules of the profession. One important thing to note is that zone three, consistent profitability is not the goal. It's zone four, which is to have meaning. Many people are very, very wealthy, but they have no meaning in their lives. That's simply another form of poverty. Having meaning in your life is incredibly important. This zone, zone four, is the area of inner and outer peace. When we look across the main markets, and the main market in the US is currently closed, but we can see there's an increased elevation of fear in the market. There's been higher levels of fear before this. This is just one level of fear. Masterclass students, you will receive this chart in TM6. What do we see when fear goes up, prices come down, just like in crypto? We can see the NASDAQ 100. It's been selling down and selling off. Like crude oil, oil is increasing parabolically at the moment. This is a really good sign. When there are real black swans, not the mini one that we've just gone through, real black swans witness oil just literally falling off a cliff because demand will shut down across the world and we see bond prices going straight up the wall we do not see that at the moment we see yields bond yields collapse off the cliff fall off the cliff we're not seeing that we see gold go parabolic just like bond prices we're not seeing that everything is quite orderly also, the DXY can increase substantially. You can think about the DXY just strengthening against other currencies. But we can see also that the DXY is be beneath a rather firm resistance level, playing at around 96,199. What do we see here? We don't see the footprints of a wide scale panic or sell off or market crash that is not coming out inside these probabilities. But the institutions love to play games with retail investors. They may sense the panic, the absolute carnage in the market and lean into that, selling their positions down. Just be aware of this. We may have seen a bottom in terms of Bitcoin's price action or maybe not. We need to keep those probabilities open. Remember, there is no certainty. And anybody that tells you there is any certainty in any market is a liar. All we can do is make in advance probabilistic choices. What will you do if price comes down, goes up or goes sideways? Make a decision and stick to it. If it's right or if it's wrong, doesn't matter. Being good to your word, that's what matters. And don't blame yourself if price moves in the opposite direction. You can always just learn from that and you can come back into the market. Opportunities are always resetting. Looking at the Chinese property market, masterclass students, you will receive this in TM5. We can see these seven companies have net debt of over $1 trillion. But what are we noticing? There's recovery in these stock market prices of these publicly traded companies. That is a restoration in confidence of these particular companies. If everything was going down the toilet, so to speak, these things would drop off a cliff. We're simply not seeing that. We're seeing the opposite. What I feel that's really happened is Ukraine has come in, Russia and Ukraine, and that has caused this technical violation to go parabolic into black swan, mini black swan territory. How far could it fall down? Well, I think the probability suggests that it would fall down as far as 30,607 if it continued to fall. But we're not seeing that. We're actually seeing prices increasing here, forming a very interesting pattern that masterclass students understand well. We also have a level of resistance playing above here. We have two upper levels of resistance that we need to get through. We can see the resistance will be overcome when we get to this 38.935 level. That will be the first stage of positive price momentum. But just beware, we've got a lot of levels of resistance above us, above current price. What happens when we get resistance? 
Well, when we get resistance, price is usually sold down. Now, that doesn't mean it will happen, but the probability certainly does go with that momentum. And we may get a long tail rejection down to gather strength to push back up. Don't forget, as more and more shorts enter the market, they will be needing to cover their positions. This is a really, really important thing to note. And also, you profit based on your ability to handle uncertainty in the market. If things are certain, you should be worried. If they're uncertain, this is the best time to do whatever action that you need to do. <laughs> so what does that mean in English, you say, Ken? What does it actually mean? It means that personally, I'm layering in here at levels of support below the current price. I always know that price is negatively biased, and that's something that we talk about all the time inside our community. When is price negatively biased? It means that we'll get these long tail rejections, this spiking down of price. But there are a lot of buyers and the bull market is far from over. Even with black swans, they're typically repaired over a number of months. Even if they do occur, they are the absolute best time to scale in if you're in a position. If you're not in a position, that's okay. They're just things to hold through. We can literally see as we stack probabilities and get away from the fantasy of certainty, the markets are looking okay. In fact, they're looking rather healthy. There is a bit of fear, but that fear is somewhat justified by what's been happening recently. The US market may continue its downward momentum, and there is gravity between the US market and the crypto market. And that's something that we always talk about. For example, we know that the stock market is risky. Crypto is even riskier and bonds are a safe haven. When bond prices go up, it's because bonds are being sought out because of the risk is getting too hot to handle in stocks and crypto. The money is flowing into bonds. And when the opposite happens, money is flowing from bonds back into stocks and crypto. There's always an interplay between these things. It's really important to understand that. When the US market opens, we may get a sell down in that, a continuation of momentum. If that happens, just be aware that that can happen and have your three-way strategy. Know what you will do. That's really, really important. All professional traders and investors know what they will do under all circumstances in the market. They don't have just one outlook. Rule 28, opportunities reset daily. Just like in life, there's always an opportunity inside every day. Things literally reset. What we see with Bitcoin, it's just pumping along this particular support line. It will get to a place where it just naturally reverses out. Price is always moving in a wave. It doesn't just go straight up and it doesn't just go straight down. It's always moving in a wave. Please bear this in mind. Sometimes when prices come down for such a long period of time, people just basically give up. That's exactly the time when prices turn around. And that is a thing that many people have found. We look at Ethereum. Ethereum has been selling down. It cannot escape Bitcoin's gravity. Binance coin has been selling down, but it had a very substantial bounce here. You can tell the relative strength of different cryptos by how much the bounce is. It's really good to look at that. Solana has also bounced. We can see bounces across the entire crypto market. Why is that? Because Bitcoin is bouncing. No alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity. If you want to know what happened to your alt, Bitcoin happened. Let's have a look at ADA. ADA is also bouncing. XRP bouncing as well. Luna has done a very hardcore bounce and it's spiked down quite significantly. Masterclass students, you will know what I'm talking about when you reach that particular lesson. DOT is also coming down. But we understand that crypto does this. Crypto can go down 80% in one month or one quarter and can go up 600% in the next. It's just what crypto does. If you understand this, it's a game changer. When I talk about crypto as volatile, let's just have a look at Rose for an example. This is every three months. 
we can see rows came down 75%, 85%, 80%, 85, 67, 49. This is not like the stock market. It's not like Forex. The crypto market is just a market of boom and bust bubbles. And as soon as you understand that, you can look at it very differently and you can say, okay, well, if this thing comes down 75% on average, I'm going to get ready for it. But what is to the upside? 300%, 566, 421, 600, 297. You can see that you can actually make a tremendous amount of money in crypto. But the real key is if you don't enhance the volatility, if you don't get ready for that, that volatility will crush your account and it will break you from a psychological aspect. That's why I always say crypto technical analysis, it's a skill, but it's a philosophy. If you're losing the philosophy part, the skill will not serve you. It will certainly help you, definitely, but we can all be victims of our mind. Our mind is the engine of our life, and it literally is the GPS as to where we go. If you expect things that will go badly for you, probably it will because we tend to attract into our lives what we think and what's drawn to us by our engine. When we look at the market from a crypto technical analysis perspective, we're just aware the price in any three month period can come down very severely. We're waiting for it. We want it to come down. That's the very, very big difference between amateur investing and trading and professional investing and trading. Looking at the next date, we see that Doge has done a technical bounce, as has AVAX, Matic, SHIB. Yesterday we were talking about the collapses, now we're talking about bounces. This is exactly, precisely what happens, and we can get days of follow through on these bounces as well. Litecoin is bouncing up as well, Uni is bouncing, Algo is bouncing up, and Chainlink as well. This is why I say, no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity is a really, really important rule. And that's why we focus so much on the macro events. They shift Bitcoin around. Bitcoin Cash is under resistance, but putting in a little bit of a bounce. Tron is under resistance, but bouncing as well. Decentraland Mana is putting in a bounce. Axie Infinity is bouncing. We'll come back to Rose in a minute. VET, we can see a minor bounce, not as strong as the other bounces. Cosmos, Adam, what a bounce. Oh, what a feeling. That's just really jumping through the air, that one. FTT has had a minor bounce. Let's have a look at Rose. When we started looking at Rose, we did some analysis, and that analysis was basically that Rose had come basically straight up the wall and down the stairs, up the wall, down the stairs. We saw a bit of up the wall and we thought, yeah, well, this thing could come down the stairs and it's certainly done so. I'll just zoom in there for you. A lot of people will look at this particular price action and they'll say, what happened to Rose? What, what did the fundamentals do? Did Rose's fundamentals change? No. What happened to Rose was Bitcoin happened to Rose. We can see Bitcoin's fingerprint in the blue down here. It's exactly what happens. Bitcoin's gravity will impact all alts. That's why I say, when it comes to crypto technical analysis, if you're only looking at the fundamentals, you're going to be in trouble. Looking at the market and what it does, knowing that Bitcoin creates implosions and explosions in price. There's so much volatility inside the market that we really have to know what we're doing at all times. When we actually lean into a trade, we do not know how low it will go. So we just put buy levels at levels of support, going back, reaching back, and we put them down as low as we think practical, sometimes even a bit lower than that. And what we find with crypto, crypto because it's so incredibly volatile, generally fills them. And that's what we exist for as a community. We take advantage of that volatility. Another really, really important thing to know, professional traders sit on paper losses. They have no problem with a paper loss because what they're doing is actually scaling in at support levels. 
they're doing this and seeking to go as low down as is practical because they've actually done the analysis on the chart beforehand and they've said this is a strong one and they actually know where it's going as well they have predefined targets one thing that you always want to keep in mind if you're sitting on a loss that is not necessarily a bad thing inside zone one and zone two losses take on a really different meaning to what professional traders and investors see. A professional looks at a loss and says, I'm lowering, lowering my average buy-in price and therefore increasing my profit when I sell. Zone one and zone two, they say something completely different. Oh my goodness, I'm sitting on a loss. I have to get rid of this. And typically the amateurs sell to the professionals. Always think if you're selling, who's buying? And if you're buying, who's selling? This is really, really important stuff. I would also suggest that you understand the crypto market could go down further, but that just creates even more opportunities. Volatility is not something to run from. It's something to run into, run towards. In the last video, the community discussed how to get out of zone one and zone two. Very interesting thing from Cass, you either learn or win. And when the markets are doing what the markets are doing right now, it's the best time to learn. Kirk said a little bit of patience is really important and learning and winning is a good one too. Jeeves also wrote a really good comment layering it in ready for all outcomes no more feeling terrible about running out of money when multiple drops occur slowly getting out of zone two and into zone three well done my friend also thanks to cindy hi canon community i managed to buy using the 10 510 and did some layer buying before i would have been panicking and self-doubt would have crept in finally i have self-belief just beautiful and rifle man real wealth is much more than money let me know barry had a really really good focus on the last few days he said the last few days were like crypto yoga lots of painful holding of tough positions great exercise i feel mentally fit with zero stress about the market fantastic my friend cheryl had some really good advice what led me out of zone one and two was having a plan and learning. Having the three plans before buying is really, really good. And Cheryl said before the masterclass, I would have been in zone one and zone two. Pepper Adams said patience and discipline are key. Let's be firefighters and embrace our new best friend, volatility. Jason also added, it's been so good doing the masterclass for times like this where you need to fully understand the overall market direction by the tools and the charts that you've given us having a 10 5 10 fund is all part of being a successful trader many traders do not have 10 5 10 funds i believe a lot of traders actually don't become successful because they haven't trained their mindset a lot of traders just get addicted to indicators and to certainty that almost guarantees failure. Being addicted to probability, on the other hand, knowing what the markets are doing, stacking probabilities, not being all in and not being all out, understanding that opportunities reset daily, price is always moving in a wave and you never miss out on opportunities. That is what being a professional is all about. Well done, Jason. Flamingo also had a really, really good statement. Understanding what Bitcoin represents is really important. Time in the market, patience is what has helped me to get to zones three and zones four. Price is always moving in a wave. There's no reason to panic. Never invest more money than you can afford to lose. Helps to avoid getting into zone one and zone two in the first place. That's really important to understand. And also the YouTube channel and masterclass, providing the knowledge to make sense of the chaotic market helps me stay in zones three and four. Thanks so much, Flamingo. Dan, well done on your progress. I will be patient and wait 
for what the chart is telling us. Excellent. And Jamie, I'm firmly in zone three for the first time ever. Fantastic. And the first time ever, not checking the market every day in fear feels good. Absolutely it does. That is the hallmark of professionalism. Crypto technical analysis is a skill and it's also a philosophy. The philosophy is all about positioning your mind to become a diamond mind. It's really important to have very professional structured thinking. That's actually what Jamie is talking about. Just beautiful. Well done, Jamie. There are so many comments here. I'll just go through them quickly. Rudy said he was definitely in zone one, zone two in the sell off July 2021. He sold close to the bottom because he panicked because he said he had zero orientation and experience and I couldn't establish rational thinking to overcome my emotional stress to gain clarity. That's so important. A lot of people actually fail in trading and investing because of the emotional side, not because they don't have the skill, but the emotional side is what will wreck people. Soon after I arrived in zone two, much self-doubt, got away from trading for a week to reflect on the situation. I'm driven to become a better person and improve every day. Give yourself time to understand and reflect. Really good advice. Thanks, Rudy. Oscar's comment is really fantastic. When I felt anger in zone two, I formulated what I should have done as a strategy to not end up here. Doing a post analysis is really, really important. Making volatility your best friend and having a strategy for simultaneously looking at what you will do up sideways and downward movement. I then resume trading the chart in front of me. Well done. Instead of holding on to negative emotions, this can be very, very challenging. To get rid of negative emotions is part of zone three. You can see why critical, how critical it is to not let your emotions dominate a trade. But unfortunately for the vast majority of traders and investors, that is exactly what happens. Oscar goes on to say, and after experiencing this several times, this three-way strategy is slowly becoming a habit. Well done, my friend. And thank you to Badger. Finding your channel plus the rules within it has helped me out of the panic and fear zones. I was light switching all in and all out and taking my positions at a single price point, trying to pick tops and bottoms. I became an emotional train wreck. Looking back now, I see those losses as very valuable lessons that I will never forget. They help me forge strong rules going forward. No more light switching, layering positions, three-way plans. Well done, Badger. Perfect. Gabriel, thanks so much for sharing. I'll be honest, I'm back in zone two. I hold too many positions and I haven't layered in enough. I'm playing with my family's future, so it's difficult not to blame myself for large paper losses. This is really, really common with trading and investing. If you come from a position where the money that you put into the market is scared by its very nature, you'll be even more scared. And that is a really harsh place to be. Well done, Gabriel. He's got the strength, faith and willpower and some dry powder left for 10, 5, 10 levels I never imagined could be filled. <laughs> the volatility of crypto. And really well done, Rudy. My zone three approach is to get as much learning from this sell off as possible. Well done, my friend. That's really what life is all about. There are no failures in anything. It's just learning. It can be wrapped up in barbed wire, but when you get through that barbed wire, it's the best present that waits on the other side. And Patrick says, I'm loving the content. Only thing that keeps sidetracking me is a lot of people saying trading in general is a bad idea as only 2% make it. You know what the problem here is, Patrick, is that most people, I would say 98% of people have a retail mindset and we can see zone one and zone two is all about the retail mindset. I'm not surprised that so many traders don't make it because they don't control their emotional DNA. It's really hard to do and it requires guide rails, but that's what it's all about. 
And like so many things, thanks for your question too. Patrick, I noticed that you're up to the timing section about halfway through the timing. When you get into the real wealth and the trigger section, everything will pull together. You're just getting the absolute foundations at the moment. Patrick also asks, I'm just still unsure if trading really works. Any thoughts? Absolutely it works. Traders can be amongst the highest paid professionals in the world and they do so because they can scale positions. When you know what to do and when you can control the particular zones that you're in, you'll find the success follows. One critical thing, thank you so much, good luck. Remember, friends don't let friends leverage trade. Keep away from that leverage and always go spot. There were so many wonderful messages that I just, I wish I had the time to go through them all. We have just the most amazing, spectacular community. I just want to let everyone know how much I appreciate you. I hope you found the content useful. Please consider sharing and liking this video if you think it will help others. Thank you very much to our moderators for keeping our community safe from scammers. And I thought what we could talk about in the next comment section or the comment section of this video is the destructive force of blame. Blame is a big, big problem. I believe blame is responsible for more losses, more relationship breakdowns, and more problems at work than any other single emotion. Talking about blame will help a lot of people. It's a natural human emotion, but for crypto technical analysts, it's absolutely deadly. It must be overcome. Please let me know what strategies you think are best for getting over blame. And of course, blame creates anger. So in actually getting rid of blame, we get rid of anger as well. That's a pretty good deal. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments section. If you would like daily updates on price movements in the crypto market, seven days a week, 365 days a year, please subscribe to YouTube. I've left helpful links in the description of this video, such as the masterclass link. Please remember, crypto is volatile. Always prepare yourself for the best and worst case scenarios. Reality will likely be between them. Stay safe out there, my friends. Take care and see you next time. Bye for now.